this experiment is actually a two-part experiment we're looking at the preparation and application of an immobilized enzyme and the enzyme with quotation marks that we're going to use is yeast because obviously yeast is an individual cell but it acts as an enzyme in this experiment so don't forget an immobilized enzyme is one that has been attached to an inert material so the first thing to do here is measure out two grams of yeast and then get 10 milliliters of water and we're going to mix them together now you'll see i have three stairs in the background there that's so that i don't contaminate one with different materials because we're going to be using three different materials here i'm just mixing up that yeast very very well to ensure that it's fully dissolved and then i put it off the side and i'm ready for the next step which is taking sodium alginate so sodium alginate is going to act as the gel in this experiment so it's going to act as the inert material slash substance so i'm just going to measure out 0 0.4 grams uh, use my mass balance and then the same thing 10 milliliters of water and mix them all together now you don't need to know the measurements that i used i'm just adding them in here so you have an idea as to why i'm using the balance because there is an important uh, ratio between them so once i have the 10 milliliters of water here i pour it into the sodium organ and then i mix it up now it takes ages to mix this up because the water turns that sodium alginate into a gel as it dissolves so it's very, very difficult to get it fully mixed up. But took about 10 minutes in real life. It's all sped up here. It takes a couple of seconds already in the video. Once that's done, then I'm going to take my calcium chloride and do the same thing. So it's a 1.5 grams of calcium chloride here. And I'm going to get 10 milliliters of water and mix it all up. The calcium chloride acts as the hardening factor. So you're going to see now in a minute. I'm going to mix up my yeast and sodium alginate and start dropping it with a syringe into the calcium chloride solution I'm producing here now. And as soon as that, that mixture of yeast and sodium alginate hits the calcium chloride, it hardens into form these little beads. So that's why we refer to the calcium chloride as the hardening factor and the sodium alginate as the gel. So there I am now mixing the yeast into the sodium alginate. Again, spent ages trying to mix this up. It's very, very difficult because it is a gel like substance but once i was happy that it was all dissolved i went off and i got my syringe you can see here with the syringe i'm going to try and take up a full syringe worth of this sodium alginate and yeast solution I had to do this twice but i'm just going to show you what it looked like once and then i slowly begin to drop the contents of this this syringe into the calcium chloride now obviously i put a good bit in there quite rapidly but you can see those lovely little beads that are forming so each drop out of syringe is hardening on impact with the calcium chloride. And what I'm going to do is once I, once I finished adding in the yeast and sodium alginate solution, I just left those beads to harden for a full 15 minutes. Once they had hardened, I then washed them out and I made sure that all the excess sodium alginate and calcium chloride was gone because I didn't want to affect the rest of the experiment. Now what you see is while those beads were hardening i prepared my sucrose solution so i did this in the background so i did five grams of sucrose for 500 milliliters of water and then i just measured 50 milliliters into these two small beakers and i'm going to add them into these tap funnels that i have here the tap funnel the right there as you can see has a straw in it that's because that's the one i'm going to add the immobilized yeast to and if there's no straw there the little beads actually block the tap funnel itself so you put a straw in advance just so that doesn't happen now i'm adding my sucrose solution into that second tap funnel there as well in preparation for using it with my free yeast so that's the last step there you can see me now i'm measuring out the yeast again again doing two grams of yeast 10 milliliters of water mixing it all up but i'm not going to immobilize this yeast instead i'm just going to put it straight into the tap funnel now into tap funnel one there with the straw i'm adding in those beads of immobilized yeast with the sucrose and here i'm just pouring in the free yeast directly into the sucrose and straight away you can see the sucrose has changed color with the free yeast and there we have our glucose testing strips otherwise known as clinistics which will change color when glucose is present so i've opened up the tap there on tap funnel one to start allowing product to be released from the tap funnel and then i do the exact same with tap funnel two and then i get my clinistics and i and then i add them into the two beakers and when I get my color change, I'll have proved that glucose is present. 
the free yeast one works fastest because the enzyme is more freely exposed and has a greater surface area effectively with the sucrose. The immobilized yeast takes longer, but the really important thing here and the reason that they're so great is because if you look at the products here, I'm going to show you the immobilized product is lovely and clear. It's a pure product, whereas the freeze, as you can see there, it's horrible. The yeast is still dissolved there with the glucose byproduct, whereas there we'll just have pure glucose. And those immobilized beads can then be reused again, which is the second major benefit of using immobilized enzymes.